Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the 4th module of DTCO super important questions and in this video we have 5 super important questions from the previous papers and the model paper so make sure you watch this video till the end, easily you can score more than 80% marks in the exam and uh, before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more videos like this so without wasting more time let's get started uh, the first super important question is explain the effect of size, cost and speed in memory hierarchy Okay. so in memory hierarchy how does uh, size, cost and speed, these 3 factors vary Okay. So this is the block diagram of the memory hierarchy so in this we have first the processor in which we have the register and the primary cache okay after that we have secondary cache which is a part of primary cache it is a, a slightly different and larger one and main memory and a magnetic disk or the secondary memory is present here so the size is increasing in this way and the speed is increasing in this way as we go up and cost is also increasing in this way so bigger the size the lesser the cost and lesser the speed also okay so uh, the cache uses SRAM and main memory uses DRAM. L1 is cache on the processor, L2 is cache of the processor. Okay. Registers, the fastest access to the data is held in registers. So, registers store the most access data and fastest uh, to get the data. Okay. Registers are a part of memory hierarchy. At the next level, a small amount can be directly implemented on a chip. This is called processor cache. Then we have the level 1 uh, under the processor which is primary cache and level 2 is secondary cache. Level 2 is implemented using SRAM. After that we have the main memory in which DRAM is used. Okay, Dynamic memory component is used. And after that we have at the last one secondary memory. It holds huge amount of data. Okay, So this is the characteristics. Speed and size and cost okay so speed sram is the fastest dram is slower and magnetic disk is the slowest size is sram is the largest and this is dram is small and magnetic disk is also small cost is expensive this is lesser expensive this is the lowest price magnetic disk okay and memory wise the speed is very high in the registers and uh, the size is lower primary cache it is high and uh, this is lower the size is lower secondary cache both are low and main memory lower than secondary cache and higher in the size the secondary memory the last one speed is very low right but it is having very high size means a lot of data can be stored so the thing is as you go more up the register primary cache secondary cache and all there the size will reduce cost will be more and the speed will also be more okay but in the uh, down part when we go there the speed will be slow but the uh, size will be bigger in which with the large data can be stored okay and the price will also be lesser okay moving on to the next super important question which is explain a dma bus arbitration and the different bus arbitration techniques okay so what is dma bus arbitration it is a technique in which the bus gets selected for a transfer of data suppose there are three or four buses which are uh, uh, requesting for our data uh, means to send the data in a main bus so which of these bus will get selected that is determined by bus arbitration techniques there are two techniques centralized bus arbitration and distributed uh, bus arbitration in central uh, centralized bus arbitration what happens is the uh, closest one will be given the priority if uh, the closest one does not want to execute the next one will be given the priority if it is not wanted to execute next one will give uh, it will give to the next one and so on till the last one so whichever one uh, comes in between that one will be executing the data in the bus and uh, like fetching the data from the processor and uh, storing to the processor and so on okay so this thing will happen in that order priority order okay so bg is bus grant bus grant will be given to this one if it does not want it will pass on and so on okay and br is bus request once on uh, someone wants to use it they will request it in the bus request after that bbc means if once the request is accepted and the transfer is happening it will be uh, happening through this line bbc okay it works in daisy chain method this is the daisy chain method where if this is uh, this does not want it sends to uh, this and if this does not want it sends to this okay like that and so on the next one is distributed bus arbitration here what happens uh, the voting happens okay due to uh, based on an algorithm there will be happening a voting okay and based on the voting a bus will be selected so here uh, the bus will be selected based on some numbers here 0 1 1 and this is a number and 0 1 0 1 will be a number so based on these two whichever bus wins that uh, bus will be selected okay so the data of the arbitrary lines is set to the interface circuit after the uh, bus gets uh, selected the data will be passed through the uh, ar uh, arbitrary lines to the interface circuit okay and the process of 4-bit code is selected when a form 
winner is winner from a given set of lines okay and selects a winner from a given set of lines there is some algorithm which works on these four bits and these four bits and a winner is selected whichever winner is selected that will be transferring the data okay we going to the third super important question describe dma with its registers and the controller firstly what is dma dma is direct memory access okay it is a process of transferring the block of data at a very high speed between the main memory and the external devices without continuous intervention of cpu means directly we are accessing the memory okay the uh, next one they had asked is what is registers register there are three type of register okay starting address register will store the starting address word count register will store the word count to be transfer uh, transferred and status and control register will have the status and control information interrupt request interrupt enable done means if the process is done then read or write it will specify what is happening is it happening read or write okay so status and control register will specify these kind of things okay next uh, they had asked about the dma controller so controller you have to make this diagram very important system will bus will be in middle okay and that will be connected to processor and memory memory in the top okay in the bottom you will be having dma controller okay dma controller will be uh, connected with other devices okay so here is the input output device printer and keyboard okay so after you have made this to initiate a dma which is direct memory access cpu transfers the following parameters first is starting address of the memory block second is how many words have to be transferred and third is is it read or write operation these three data will be sent so that the processor will be ready whether a read or write operation is happening and from where and uh, to where it is happening okay since dms steals the uh, cycles of cpu it is called as cycle stealing because directly we are able to access and write into the memory without having any cpu cycle that, that's why it is called as cycle stealing DMA sometimes transfers block of code from memory to I/O and vice versa. This is called as burst mode operation. In this, what happens? A lot, a large amount of data gets transferred in a single instant. Okay. That was about the DMA register and controller. Going on to the fourth super important question: What is cache memory? Explain different mapping functions used in cache memory. Okay. So basically, what is cache memory? Cache memory is the fast access memory located between processor and the main memory. It is designed to reduce access time. So this is processor, this is main memory. In between, what is there? That is cache memory. It is used to store the data which is more recently accessed. Okay. There are three techniques to map main memory into the cache memory. First is direct, second is associative, and third one is set associative. Let's understand each one by one. First, in direct mapping, what happens? The data block J from the main memory is modulo with 128. Means whatever the block I have got, I'll do modulo 128 with that, and what answer I will get in cache that place I will store. For example, if the block is 2672, I'll do modulo 128. I'll get 112. So in the cache, where it will be stored in 112. Okay. And when another block also gives 112, the overwriting will happen. Suppose another block came and gave it as another. Uh, same number if one went to so the data will be replaced with a newer block okay and memory address is stored in this format tag is 5 bits block is 7 bits word is 4 bits okay so the official diagram is also here here also the same thing which i have explained so based on this ones uh here it will be stored based on that modulo operation okay <coughs> next one is associative mapping here anywhere in the cache the main memory block can be placed okay there is no algorithm here anywhere it can be placed just that after placing the tag and the word will be specified here so that we will be able to identify where what is stored okay where what is stored next i is set asset associative mapping it is a combination of direct and associative mapping okay so blocks of uh, cache are divided into several blocks called as sets there will be many sets made okay and each block contains a control bit called as valid bit now what does valid bit do If it is zero means power is initially applied. If it is one means block is loaded from the memory for the first time. Okay, and memory block is loaded when uh, in one of the sets. Which uh, set will be uh, included? That depends on the tag number. Okay, so based on the tag number, each group is given a tag number for identification. Once a uh, uh, memory, once a data comes and sits into one of the block, the tag number will be there and set number will be there. By the combination of set and tag, we will be able to identify where it is. Okay, so tag will be six bits, set will be six bits, and word will be four bits. Okay, so here different uh, places the data is stored. Okay, and identification is done based on set and tag. Okay. that was about the uh, different uh, mapping techniques going on to the last super important question which is explain the hardware interrupt okay how many questions are there hardware interrupt enabling disabling of uh, disabling of interrupts sequence of events handling in a request uh, handling interrupt request from a single device okay so three questions have been asked let's uh, understand each one by one so the first is interrupt hardware okay interrupt hardware means how is the circuits designed for handling interrupts 
external device means io device sends an interrupt request to the processor by activating a bus line called as interrupt request line there is a bus line this is input output device and it uh, activates this uh, to send to a processor that uh, line is called as interrupt request line also io devices use the same single interrupt request line all the io devices share that line okay one end is uh, connected to the power supply another end is connected to intr okay as you can see this is the line and one end is connected to power supply and another end is connected to intr okay io device is connected to intr line via switch which is grounded okay so this is a switch so whenever all the switches are zero this will be neutral okay all the switches are zero everything will be neutral whenever uh, interrupt uh, whenever an io device wants to send an uh, interrupt signal here for some execution of a process so it will be this uh, will be joined here so that current will go from here and this will be activated so one of the i uh, input output device can um, transfer the data okay this is how interrupt happens io device whenever it interrupts the processor it uh, closes the switch okay now enabling and disabling of interrupt was the second question the arrival of interrupt stops the current execution and starts the interrupted program some program is going on if input output device interrupt comes this program will be stopped input output will be done then it will be resumed from here okay all computers can enable or disable interrupts if you don't require any interrupts coming in between you can put it in non interrupt uh, mode so that interrupts will be disabled or you can enable it if you want uh, interrupt to uh, no problem if it comes in also in between okay like that when an interrupt is under execution other interrupt should be not invoked if one interrupt is already executing other interrupts all should be disabled okay this is some of the use cases where enabling and disabling of the interrupt happens now suppose that interrupt has come how do we handle it device raises an interrupt request okay process interrupts the program and currently being executed so currently one program is executed it breaks okay interrupt comes current execution breaks and interrupts are disabled by changing the control bits in a processor uh, status register suppose you don't want interrupts you can change the control bits in process status register so that interrupts will be disabled now device is being informed that the request has been recognized and in response the device deactivates the interrupt request signal now it uh, once the interrupt request is accepted the other uh, devices should not be able to send the interrupt request for that uh, disable the io device only or disable the line in which the interrupt interrupts are being sent means device deactivates the interrupt request signal after it is made sure that no other interrupts will come the action requested by the first interrupt is performed by the interrupt service routine isr will uh, perform the uh, uh, perform the task which the first interrupt had requested okay after that interrupts are enabled again after the execution of the first interrupt then new interrupts are again taken okay like that this is the sequence of steps which is uh, which is followed for handling the interrupts uh, service means interrupts for handling the interrupts okay that's all uh, for this video and uh, please like and subscribe it helps to make more dis like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one